Welcome to session two of the Sankofa series. This presentation brings you the history of Black History Month with a focus on the man who made it possible, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Many of us have been enriched by and enjoyed Black History Month celebrations, events, presentations, and conferences for years. Fewer of us, however, are aware that this tradition dates back almost a century. We owe this important tradition to an outstanding Black man. That man is no other than Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who is adoringly known as the father of Black history. Now, we may know Dr. Woodson as the author of The Miseducation of the Negro and many other important titles, but now we will explore the magnitude of his work and contributions to people and to our country. Dr. Woodson was born in 1875 in Virginia. As you might gather from that date, his parents were both freed slaves who had nine children. Carter spent his childhood working as a sharecropper, a mine worker, and a garbage driver. Because he worked so much, he didn't actually attend school regularly until he was 20 years old when he completed high school in just two years. This brilliant artwork by Charles Alston explains that Carter could only go to school on rainy days when it was too wet outside to farm. But after graduation, he traveled to the Philippines to work in education and also traveled extensively throughout the world before earning his master's degree. In 1912, Dr. Woodson became the second black man in history to earn a PhD from Harvard. W.E.B. Du Bois would be the first. Even more fascinating and astounding, Dr. Woodson is the only person of enslaved parents to earn a PhD in history from any institution in the United States. Realizing how underrepresented and marginalized Black people were in American history, Woodson and Jesse E. Moreland founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History in 1915. That organization is now the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, or the ASALH. He became dedicated to the study of Black history as a discipline and the recognition of the achievements and accomplishments of African Americans throughout history. Dr. Woodson asserted, if a race has no history, it has no worthwhile tradition it becomes a negligible factor in the thought of the world, and it stands in danger of being exterminated. Dr. Woodson published his first book in 1915, and the following year, he established the Journal of Negro History, which is now known as the Journal of African American History. He was also a principal and dean of liberal arts at the HBCU, or Historically Black College and University, Howard, and West Virginia Collegiate Institute. Here is but a glance at some of his publications, a tremendous collection of work and study. Dr. Woodson would go on to publish more than a dozen books dedicated to promoting the greatness of people of African descent. But how did Dr. Woodson become the father of Black History Month, you might ask? In 1926, Woodson and the ASALH launched Negro History Week to bring attention to the mission of uplifting Black history and to help school systems coordinate their focus and curriculum on the topic. He chose the second week in February because it encompassed both Frederick Douglass's birthday and Abraham Lincoln's birthday. This is the origin of why Black History Month today is celebrated in the month of February. Negro History Week had a powerful impact and was immediately embraced by the Black community and organizations such as the NAACP at a time when the concept of the new Negro was taking hold. 
advancing the progress of the people in previously impossible ways. Negro History Week celebrations and studies spread quickly, demanding teaching materials and curriculum and spurring the formation of black history clubs. But although a newfound understanding of black history and culture and literature was spreading, it would not be until decades later that the nation would come to recognize and appreciate Black History Month. During the civil rights movement, black students in Southern schools particularly embraced the concept of black histories and studies. In the 60s, Colleges and universities across the country transformed the week into Black History Month on their college and university campuses. In 1970, the Black United students and educators of Kent State University in Ohio made history and became the first institution to extend Black history to the entire month of February. The growth of Black History Month, as opposed to only a week, had been adopted in many cities by the time President Ford decreed Black History Month nationally in 1976. Here is an actual newspaper image from the first Black History Month celebration in 1976. Some people wondered why February, the shortest month of the year, is dedicated to Black history. We recognize the reason why Dr. Woodson chose the dates in February now. However, it's important to consider the following statement. Dr. Woodson never viewed Black history as a one-week affair. He pressed for schools to use Negro History Week to demonstrate what students learned all year. In the same vein, he established a Black Studies Extension Program to reach adults throughout the year. It was in this sense that Blacks would learn of their past on a daily basis that he looked forward to the time when an annual celebration would no longer be necessary. Daryl Michael Scott, Professor of History at Howard University. The following slides contain words of wisdom as quoted by the great Dr. Woodson. It's important that we reflect upon the fact that a hundred years later, these words still ring true. For example, we should emphasize not Negro history, but the Negro in history. What we need is not the history of select races and nations, but the history of the world void of national bias, race hate, and religious prejudice, 1926. Let us banish fear. We have been in this mental state for three centuries. I am a radical. I am ready to act if I can find brave men to help me. The mere imparting of information is not education. Above all things, the effort must result in making a man or a woman think and do for himself or herself. We have a wonderful history behind us. It reads like the history of a people in a heroic age. We are going back to that beautiful history and it is going to inspire us to greater achievements. We conclude with an example of a student activity that can be used to engage students in the exploration and learning about Dr. Carter G. Woodson. You create a Google slide deck and share the link with your students. And in this activity, they will be called to copy and paste an example of a quote by Dr. Woodson. They can find many of them online through Google Images. They copy and paste the quote to their slide, put their name on the top, and on the other side, write a brief statement that is a reflection about what the quote means to them what is its relevance and significance towards American education, Black or African American people, or America as a whole. And then they can visit other students' slides and comment about connections that they make, bits of brilliance that they find in each other's work, and it can extend the learning of Dr. Woodson into a very enriching activity. 
We thank you, Dr. Woodson, for your contributions to humanity and to education and to the uplifting of the glorious black history that we all should be celebrating throughout the year. The Black Faculty Task Force and Ethnic Studies Departments of Delta College, thank you for viewing this important presentation and we hope that you are looking forward to session three. May peace be with you all.